Hello everyone, this is Lousy Facelift and it's about time for me to make a new video for the MC505 and I want to talk about uh, editing your own sounds and uh, creating your own drum kits today in the MC505. And uh, the first thing I'd like to mention is that it's very important to save your own sounds before writing your own patterns because uh, when you're just taking a drum kit or a kind of sound and you make all kinds of changes and then you record a pattern and uh, save the pattern but you've forgotten to, to uh, write your sounds first then these sounds will be lost and you will end up uh, with presets for what you've already recorded the preset that you started out with creating these sounds so that's very important to keep in mind so um, I want to start out by explaining drum kits first and um, there are other aspects like uh, assigning effects to individual uh, drum instruments that I won't cover today. Uh, this is basic stuff basically, uh, yeah, basically basic stuff, yes. Um, all right, without any further ado, I want to show you how that works. Um, first of all, we need to find ourselves a drum kit that sounds pretty good for what we have in mind then we can change individual instruments here by pressing the wave select button and then we can change single instruments in this drum kit simply by turning the value dial and assigning different waveforms okay let's say I want something else for the snare here let's say I want a hip hop snare or a dance hall snare here then I can assign this maybe change the pitch a little bit then we can uh, change frequency chorus tune and this is interesting when I move the knob here I was already speculating whether this is uh, just on my machine here or if all of the machines work this way because uh, moving the pitch knob doesn't give me any changes in pitch here I have to use the value dial for this Okay, let's say I want to use it like this, then, okay, and then, well, all these changes, I can make the same kind of changes for all the pads, all these changes will be kept in the drum kit when I press right, Use my, uh, choose my um, memory location here, and then uh, press enter and confirm, and then it is stored in this memory slot that I've uh, selected here. All right. So, um, yeah, that's basically it for, for uh, drum kits. I've already shown you how to manipulate individual sounds and or uh, the whole drum kit using the envelope here in my previous video. Um, next thing I want to talk about uh, instruments uh, and uh, synth sounds in the 505. And there is, uh, there is an initialize function Let's say I want to uh, use this preset sound here. Or oh, let's say I, I'm on this. I have to get rid of the delay first though. Um, I don't know if I use any reverb here. Okay. So, um, I can initialize a patch simply by holding down shift and then pressing the right key. It has this uh, box that says initialize uh, written underneath it. And I can say, um, yeah, I want to initialize this patch. And then I get this blank patch right here. And uh, if I want to see what this patch consists of, I can have a look at its structure. It only uses one tone, one of four tones. A patch can hold up to four different uh, tones or waveforms. And I can select a, a number of waveforms that's used for this patch. So now I've added a couple more. These are all four tones, but they are all the same tones. That's why only the, the sound just gets louder when I because these are stacked on top of each other. So the level is added up for each tone. 
and um, I can also select which of these tones should be affected by turning knobs, making all kinds of editing changes here. And so, um, but um, if you want to influence a number of tones at the same time, then you have to hold down uh, one knob and then add onto that, pressing down the other uh, buttons here. If, um, if you want to simply change individual tones, then you can press just one of these buttons in the tone select section right here. Okay, but I want to use only two tones and also influence these two tones at the same time. And if I want to know what these tones actually are, tones or waveforms, uh, you could call them, I can see that this is A1 and A1 assigned to both of these uh, tones here. And I can um, then have a look at the list of waveforms and actually read the names but for this, I have to be on a single tone. So I select only one tone and they are both the same. Both are a one TB distorted saw wave form. And I can say, okay, I wanna change this for my first tone on uh, in the uh, patch. I wanna use a, maybe a D50 E piano sound. And for the second tone, I want and yeah, why not FM pulse wave? So now these two waves are selected for my patch and I can then use the page buttons right here to look at all other settings that I can make. Um, next up is the wave gain screen here. The first one is, I went all the way back now. The first one is select on or off. If I don't have anything activated in the tone switch section here, then I don't get any sound at all. So I can use one or these two waves like I was uh, going to. And now I can make changes for the level, the wave gain level. And um, you've seen when I used all four tones uh, and all this of the same kind, um, the patch became pretty loud automatically simply by stacking up these sounds. Uh, in such a case, it makes sense to maybe uh, use a low setting, maybe a negative setting for the wave gain here, or maybe neutral. When you're only using one or two tones, it could make sense to use a value of plus six or plus 12, even just to make sure that your patches are on an even level for all the patches that you have in the machine. So I'm going to use a setting like this. Next is the frequency cross modulation uh, function. This can be switched on or off. Frequency cross, cross modulation basically adds overtones to the sound you're creating in a similar way like you would get from an overdrive um, if it's used in a kind of subtle way because they are not so, these changes are, but it sounds a lot more synthetic and, and a, a bit, well, a bit weird sometimes. And also for, depending on which waveforms you're using, it can really um, take away the precision in pitch so that when you're playing the keys, you cannot really tell what, um, what the 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 real pitch of notes is you sometimes press a lower key from what you've pressed, uh, played before and then the sound still becomes or it sounds as if it was a higher pitch when it really isn't so um, in this case you can still hear the pitch okay kind of but in, in uh, for other waveforms it is really, it, it takes away a lot of the precision in pitch. Okay, but it's kind of interesting that this is there and for some um, synth sounds, this, this adds a nice kind of uh, grimy uh, feel to the sound you're making. Okay, so that's the wave select section here. Um, all of these editing functions can be reached either using the knobs and then you can press the page keys for all the other pages that are in the same menu 
or you can hold down the edit button and then see what uh, have a look at the pages that are associated to all the keyboard pads here and all of the 16 keyboard pads hold um, uh, parameters that you can change uh, to make your own patches for example and and some of these functions can only reached be reached this way for example the lfo2 page or the common page here can only be reached using the edit button and then now that i um, selected pad number 10 i can see here lfo2 is written in the in the screen and now i can make changes for the waveform of the lfo and now scroll through the other pages using the page button left and right and um yeah the lfo is really complex in the 505 um they only have four target parameters that can be influenced and these are pitch filter amp and pan but since you have two lfos you can have maybe a slow modulation on the filter and then a fast modulation at the amp at this uh, for the amp at the same time and that can really sound cool you can even define certain stages of when the lfo should affect the sound for example you can have the lfo applied only to the release phase of the uh, of the sound when you let go of the key only you can have it set so that only then the LFO affects the sound. I'm going to demonstrate that uh, really quick here. For this sound, I'm not even using a long release phase. So that's the first thing I need to change. I want the note to fade out slowly after I let go of the key. Okay, now I'm going to the LFO menu and type in an LFO amp depth now so you can already hear it i also want to change the waveform to a square wave now the modulation come, becomes a bit stronger i also want to use tempo sync for the lfo and now that i've set tempo sync i then have to go back to the rate and then when i use the value dial i won't see any uh, numbers in the display but actually um, note values here like this i now have the synced lfo set to quarter notes affecting the um, loudness and then uh, what i was talking about um, i can set it so that the lfo only affects the sound when i let go of the key like this while I hold the note down, I don't hear the LFO at all, but once I let go of the key, now the modulation sets in. And I want to talk about uh, one other parameter here, that, which is the offset. Uh, if you're dialing in changes for the LFO and you have the feeling that this is still a bit subtle and not really noticeable and you want a strong modulation with a lot of punch that really affects the sound, then maybe you should just play around with the offset setting here and now with a setting like this I really get a lot stronger sounding modulations now but maybe I should use uh, use it for the whole sound not only when letting go of the key so I'm going to set this to on in again I, I don't really know what this means actually I cannot explain everything very detailed here because there are so many uh, changes you can make but like this for example you can hear that the, the, the uh, sound really gets cut off and then triggered again that's at least that's what it sounds like using the LFO in this way also want to I don't want the sound to be so Damp, I know. Okay. And maybe, yeah, we could also change uh, the speed again of the LFO. I think that was it. Maybe make it a bit faster. Uh, okay, but it, again, and I, I don't know, it sounds a bit 
No. Key sync on. It, this triggers the waveform for the LFO along with the note. Oh yeah, where are my depth? Okay, where's my... Okay, there's my depth. Now. When I have set the LFO like this, it really gives me strong modulations and um, yeah. So. And I can also define a certain delay, a delay time that passes before the LFO really uh, influences the sound. So if I dial in a value here, first when pushing down on the key, I don't hear the LFO at all and then it sets in later. Like this, which is also really cool. And I can even have it, uh, the modulation fade in gradually. So that when holding down the note at first, I don't hear it, and then it gradually becomes louder and louder. When I use this kind of setting, fade time, I can define the fade time here and say maybe, okay, around 74. Or so. And the modulation gets louder and louder, louder the longer I hold down the note. Like this. Pretty complex uh, kind of synthesis going on here for the LFO, and I think this is a ma amazing for a machine like this. Uh, you don't find anything this complex in most modern groove box type of machines out there on the market today. Pretty, pretty awesome stuff, really. Uh, all right, there's one more. Um, thing i'd like to mention i mean maybe i should maybe i should explain the envelope a little bit um using the envelope you have these four sliders here and uh, you have a kind of an offset value for two of these parameters pitch and filter for the amp when you use it on the amp you have a, a time value that can be set for attack decay and release and then sustain is actually a loudness value so this is like a this is like a level knob or level setting kind of here for the sustain. Attack, uh, when you uh, raise up the level or then not the level, the value for attack time, then you get a soft attack and the note fade or the sound fades in. When this is set down, you get a punchy sound and a fast attack here. Then when you don't use sustain or release, the decay value defines the length of the note and it fades out after the de uh, decay phase is over. You can still hear the LFO. But if you want to give it a fast attack and then still hold the note on a certain level here, that is what the sustain slider is for. Note is still there after the decay phase is over and is held on this level right here. And then release finally defines how long the note is kept when you let go of the key and how long it, it, it needs to fade out, basically. So now I let go of the key and you can still hear it for the kind of amount of time that I set here using the release slider. So that's how the em envelope works. Um, there's a portamento page. Again, um, once I've uh, selected the, the wave um, uh, files, uh, no, no, not files, the, the wave um, parameters here, and I then see all kinds of changes um, as soon as I move a knob somewhere and then I'm already in the kind of section and I can then use the page knobs to see all the other pages associated with that particular section. For example, in the portamento section, I have portamento time. I have, um, yeah, a 
legato setting, which means that portamento will only be applied. Portamento means that I transition from one pitch of a note to the next one. Um, Okay, I have to activate it, of course, using the on switch here. You can hear that the pitch now travels to the next higher note. And I don't have legato mode activated now. If I, if I did, then I would only hear this portamento effect when I really play legato, which means which means pressing a note and while I still have it held down and then press another note, the, the, the pitch will transition to this other value. But if I don't, and this can be heard a bit better when I have solo activated here. But if I don't play legato, I don't get the portamento effect. So if I let go of the note first before pressing another one, I don't have portamento if I do. And I get this transition. Okay, so that pretty much explains how that works. I want to talk about one more thing, which is the common section. And uh, this is very complex stuff going on in this section, but I cannot really explain what it does because it is, yeah, a bit. Uh, too complicated for me to explain this still I can just give you an idea of what the uh, common section does so to uh, reach these functions we need to hold down the edit button again and then press pad key number 11 uh, in this section we can select different 10 different kind of structures for our patches and the very first structure that's uh, what I guess I, I, I use most of the time to just layer these tones um, on top of each other without affecting each other a lot. But then um, when choosing another structure, this, uh, f for example, I think this second one makes the different filter types uh, it makes a combination of filter types in some kind of way so that you get a different behavior for the filter than you do using the first structure. Um, the sound changes quite a bit depending on what you select here and I think some other aspects for these functions have to do with the order that the signal reaches these individual sections. If you think of this like a modular synth where you have all kinds of uh, modules for maybe only the oscillator and then for an LFO and you could send the signal from the oscillator to the LFO first and then to the amp or the other way around you could go from the oscillator to the amp first and then to the LFO and um, you get a slightly different sound from the way you're patching things. And I think this is kind of what these structures, the results that you get from these structures, these are predefined orders in which the signal passes these different sections or modules. And that's why you get a different sound choosing different structures. But again, very complex stuff, too much for me to explain at this point. Uh, and I don't even really know. Uh, I haven't learned uh, all of this yet myself. Uh, so um, I simply use these things and, and uh, you know, I, I listen to the results I get and then I go with what sounds best. Um, I cannot give you a little more detailed information. There's also a booster setting here. I mean, it's quite, well, it's kind of, we all know all know what a booster does. It boosts certain frequencies, I guess. But again, what exactly is happening here? I couldn't really say. Stretch tune is also one of these parameters that I have to find out for myself. Um, 
Key range is kind of easy to explain. This divides the keyboard into different uh, sections and then I can define which of these tones will be activated on these ranges of keys so that I don't hear them somewhere in the middle of the keyboard but when I uh, play a low range uh, yeah then then these tones are activated instead of others yeah okay so um, that's the full range I can see right here from uh, C minus one up to uh, G9 and then I could shorten the range for certain tones or um, and then they will only play in this predefined range. Uh, velocity, it's basically the same thing. I have my external keyboard hooked up here, by the way. And you can hear that depending on how hard I hit the keys on this keyboard, the sound changes. So even though the pads that the MC505 has um, don't send out velocity sensitivity. Um, these uh, velocity changes are recognized by the 505 when I play an external keyboard. And then I can also de decide um, on which velocity values trigger individual tones and in which velocity range uh, another tone is triggered something like that velocity range u is for upper and then l is for lower okay so in this case i could set a range of maybe only only the only half of the full velocity range for these two tones uh, these two and then maybe switch on these two tones and say okay and these should be used from oh no uh, oh yeah yeah when I press the key uh, with a value that is uh, above 64 then these two tones will be triggered anything below uh, 64 will trigger these two tones um, yeah, that would be a setup using this kind of uh, parameter here. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching. Um, I hope you found this a bit helpful. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, just write me a comment. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.